Modal verbs. Modals are some of the most useful verbs that you can learn, especially for smooth communication in the workplace. We use modals to express ourselves in many ways, including showing politeness or strengthening certain statements. In this video, we will look at the most important modal verbs, talk about what a modal is, why they are useful, how to use them, and some common errors students make with modals. What is a modal? A modal is not actually a verb in the same way that simple past tense is a verb that tells you about what or when something happens. There is usually no tense or action associated with modal verbs at all. Instead, they are more similar to auxiliary verbs or helping verbs that are used to express a function in English like ability, permission, request, possibility, obligation, preference, and necessity. Why are modals useful? Because modals express permission, request, necessity, or ability, modals are particularly helpful in communicating your wants, needs, or desires with others. Also, it's important to note that modals can help you express yourself in varying degrees. For example, we can speak less politely, can you help me with this? Or more politely, could you help me with this? Or you can say something more strongly, we must end the meeting at noon, or less strongly, we should end the meeting at noon. So you can see how important modals can be for workplace settings and ensuring smooth, efficient, and specific communication with others. Before we get started on the functions associated with modal verbs, let's consider some important grammar points about using them. Rule number one. A modal verb is usually followed by the base form of the verb without to. For example, I could help the trainees set up their workstations. Not, I could to help the trainees set up their workstations. Exceptions to this rule include ought to, have to, and be able to. Rule number two. A negative modal is formed by adding not after the modal. For example, the meeting should not be too long. Exceptions to this rule include be able to, I am not able to make the deadline, have to, you do not have to come into the office on Saturday. And in North America, it's a little strange for us to use ought to in a negative form, so we usually avoid it. Rule number three. Modal verbs do not usually have a verb tense except for some modals which have a past form. For example, I can't finish the report today. I couldn't finish the report today. Exceptions. Most other modals do not have a past tense form. Rule number four. Modal verbs are not conjugated for number or gender. For example, he cans meet at 3.30. The correct sentence is he can meet at 3.30. Exceptions have to and be able to. Rule number five, modal verbs cannot be used together. For example, I might can work on Sunday. Exceptions, be able to. With this modal, we will often combine it with others. For example, I might be able to work on Sunday. What also makes modals confusing, however, is that modals can have several different meanings. For example, using this modal chart, we can see that can can be used to signify ability, like I can help with that if you like, permission, as in can I take a message, request, can you print out a copy for me, and prohibition. That information cannot be shared. To make things clearer, let's look at the different functions and the modals that can be used to express them. Ability. 
Ability is one of the first things that people start with when learning modals. Can and be able to are used fairly interchangeably, although be able to is more formal. I can help you this afternoon versus I am able to help you this afternoon. Also, we use be able to with other modals because it's one of the few modals that can be used in conjunction with another modal. I might be able to help you this afternoon. Possibility. When we express possibility or something where there is a 50% chance of something happening, we use may, might, and could. There is no real difference in politeness or strength with these modals for possibility. The meeting might be cancelled. The meeting may be cancelled. The meeting could be cancelled. Permission and request. A very important part of being polite is understanding the different levels of formality and politeness when asking permission or making requests in the workplace. Permission means that the speaker is asking if it is okay if they do something, so the subject is usually I or we. For asking permission, we use the modals can, may, could, would, and there are different levels of politeness. Can I borrow your pen? To a friend or fellow coworker. Could I finish it on the weekend? To a fellow coworker or a supervisor. May I sit here? To a supervisor or stranger. Would I be able to leave at noon? I have an appointment. To a supervisor. Also, a huge part of workplace culture is making requests, and it's important to learn how to do it politely. Requests means that the speaker is asking if someone can do something for them, so the subject is usually you. For making requests, we use can, could, will, and would for requests, again with varying levels of politeness. Can you or will you please email me an update? to a fellow coworker. Could you please take minutes? To a fellow coworker or a supervisor. Would you please repeat that? To a supervisor or stranger. Notice that any time you make a request or ask permission, you can make it even more polite with the addition of please. Suggestion, obligation, prohibition. When we reach suggestion, obligation, and prohibition, modals play a role in how strong the function is. For giving suggestions or advice, we use should or ought to, although just to note that ought to is not used that much in North America. If you have any questions, you should contact HR. The next level would be have to or have got to to express obligation or necessity. We have to set up the conference room in an hour. Another note is that have got to is a little less formal. Finally, must is one of the strongest ways to express obligation or necessity. Workers must report unsafe conditions to their supervisor. And strangely enough, when we want to express a prohibition, that is something you are not allowed to do, we can use both must not and cannot although cannot is not quite as formal as must not. Employees cannot enter the building without their ID cards on the weekends. Finally, a funny point about the negative of have to, that is, don't have to, this modal signifies lack of necessity. You don't have to come into the office every day. You can also work from home. Preference. The last function we will cover is preference. One of the ways to express preference is through the modal would. I would rather meet in a cafe than in the boardroom. Some other expressions like would prefer, would like, or prefer can also be used to express preference, but they are not modals. The verb following these expressions is in the infinitive with to. I would like to start this meeting with a land acknowledgement. Before I sign off, I'd like to go over a few of the errors that are often made when using modals. Error number one, 
not using the correct modal for the situation. To your boss, can you sign my timesheet? It would be better to be more polite. Would you please sign my timesheet? Error number two, adding an S at the end of the modal. He can be there at three. The correct sentence is, he can be there at three. Error number three, adding an auxiliary verb like do not for negative modals. Remember that modals are auxiliary verbs, so except for some exceptions, you don't need to add another auxiliary verb. I don't can make the meeting today. The correct sentence is, I can't make the meeting today. Error number four, forgetting the auxiliary verb or incorrectly conjugating modal exceptions. I able to help you today. Those modal exceptions can be hard to remember. I am able to help you today. Error number five, adding a two after the modal. You should not to work on the weekend. You should not work on the weekend. Error number six, using two modals together. I will can refill the photocopier with paper. Choose either will or can here or change can to be able to. I will refill the photocopier with paper. Error number seven, confusing modals of permission or request. May you sign this for me, please? May is only for permission. Could you sign this for me, please? And that's it. It's worth it to focus on modals and to practice using them in your speaking and other communication with colleagues because you can refine how polite or how strong you want your statements to be. Thanks for listening.